A few days ago, OpenAI released GPT-4.0. And in this video, we are going to walk through the announcement article, check out some of its capabilities, explore some of the examples. But what I really want to talk about is the consistent character problem. And if a model trains specifically on visual inputs like this model has been, does that allow us to create consistent characters across multiple different scenes? I don't want to spoil what this example shows, so let's get into it. Okay, this article was released on May 13th, 2024. They're announcing GPT-4.0, which is their new flagship model. And the big thing is it can reason across audio, vision, and text in real time. We've had vision before with GPT Vision. Obviously, we've had text. The new thing here is audio. Taking audio as an input and outputting via audio, text, images, whatever. So I know what you're thinking. This is exactly like ChatGPT voice that we've had within ChatGPT. Now we can do it via the API. I'm not going to capture this video sound, but I've watched it before. Basically, he's talking to the AI, but he has his camera on. So he's showing the AI a video of the room. He's asking it, what type of room am I in? And the AI is responding. You are in a recording type studio room. There are lights all around you. Talks about the chair and the desk in the background. So it's seeing the visual input and it's responding in real time. The O in GPT-4.0 stands for Omni. And they're taking a step towards natural human to computer interactions. So just like a human, it accepts text, audio, image, video, and can generate any combination of text, audio, and image outputs. The amazing part about this model is its speed of output. It's responding to audio inputs in as little as 232 milliseconds, an average of 320 milliseconds, which is similar to human response time and conversation. You're talking to a friend, it takes a bit to process what the other person said, and then they respond. We're getting that same speed with an AI to human interaction now. It matches the GPT-4 turbo performance on text in English and code with improvements in non-English languages. And this is the big thing for all the API users. It's 50% cheaper. We're almost touching GPT 3.5 turbo prices. And because of that, which you'll see later in this article, the free version of ChatGPT now uses GPT 4 Omni. They're saving on costs, so they're allowing the free users to use it as well. Taking a quick look at it, the input has now dropped to 0.005 cents per 1000 tokens. The output is now 0.015 cents per 1,000 tokens. The vision price is a lot cheaper as well. And let's go down to GPT-4 Turbo. The input used to be 0.01, so it's exactly half the price. And the output as well used to be 0.03 cents per 1,000 tokens, and now it's 1.5 cents. GPT-3.5 Turbo is still a bit cheaper. But with GPT-4 Omni, we're getting all of those possible inputs and outputs, and the performance is way higher. There is still use cases for GPT-3.5 Turbo. I don't see any use case for GPT-4 anymore. Okay, in the model capability section, they have a bunch of videos for us. I didn't really care for the two GPT-Os interacting and singing. That one was a little silly. Interview prep is what it sounds like. Playing rock, paper, scissors with the model is pretty neat. Obviously, it can see what you're putting out in the video. Point and learn Spanish is a good use case for this new model. In the video, they're pointing at various fruits, an apple and a banana, and it's saying how to say those in Spanish. Real-time translation seems to be one of the best use cases. They're having a conversation in different languages, and in real time, it's translating what the other person is saying. Prior to this new model, you could use voice mode to talk to ChatGPT with latencies of 2.8 seconds for GPT 3.5 and 5.4 seconds for GPT 4 on average. And the reason it was this long, they say, 
is because voice mode had this long pipeline. It had to transcribe audio to text. It had to use GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 to take that text and then output text. And then they had one more model that converted that text back to audio. So that chain of models took on average 2.8 to 5.4 seconds. With GPT-4 Omni, they trained one single model across those various inputs, all on the same neural network. So gpt 4 o is combining all of these modalities, which makes it a lot faster. So I tried this on my Android phone within ChatGPT, and I didn't notice a difference. It still took about five seconds. I wonder if it's because it's new, it just got released two days ago, but I was hoping for something more immediate. Let me know about your guys' experiences in the comments below. In this section, they walk through a bunch of examples that you can use GPT-4 Omni for. We're gonna come back to this because I wanna talk about the consistent character. The next section of the article is model evaluations. They put all of these models through various benchmark tests to see how it performs. It looks like the models they used for this test were GPT-4 Omni, GPT-4 Turbo, the original GPT-4, Claude 3 Opus, Gemini Pro 1.5, Gemini 1.0, and Llama 3. GPT-4 O is this first red bar and it seems to outperform almost every model for the various tests in text evaluation. For audio ASR, it compared itself against their old model Whisper version 3, they're saying lower is better, the right bar has outperformed. For audio translation, it's beating all the models. I'm not too sure what this test is, M3 exam zero shot, but GPT-4 Omni outperforms GPT-4, and in vision understanding evaluations, it performs the highest on each of these tests. In the language tokenization portion of the article, my hunch as to why it is cheaper is because it's able to represent a lot of these languages in fewer tokens. Even though English has dropped only 1.1 times, so this full sentence used to take 27 tokens and now takes 24 tokens, scale that across hundreds of thousands of words and you can get some pretty significant results. In the next section, they talk about model safety and limitations. Like all their other features, OpenAI is very keen on AI safety. For the limitations, in this video, the only thing I noticed is it kind of interrupts their conversation. And then it keeps apologizing that it's interrupting their conversation so no one can speak. I still run into that problem when I'm talking to the original ChatGPT voice. I often have to touch the button manually to tell it that I'm done speaking. Sometimes it thinks I'm done speaking when I'm just thinking. And it looks like this newest model still has that problem. Last but not least is the model availability. GPT-4 Omni text and image are now available within ChatGPT. It's available in the free tier. They're giving us five times higher message limits. So if you ran into that 30 messages for every three hours limits, that is almost non-existent now. And they plan on rolling out a new version of voice mode with GPT-4 Omni within the next couple of weeks. So that's a bit confusing to me because you can select GPT-4 O in voice mode. I wonder if behind the scenes it's still using GPT-4 Turbo. We can access GPT-4 O in the API as text and vision models. So it's twice as fast, half the price, five times higher rate limits. And in an email I got just the other day, they're telling us that everyone should be switching to this model there's basically no use for GPT-4 Turbo anymore. So us as developers, we have to manually change to this latest model. All right, back to the examples. So in this input, they say a cartoon mail delivery person with a smile on her face. She is standing facing forward in front of a white background. And you can see in the output, we have a male lady. I want you to pay attention to the clothes she's wearing, the colors, the purse, the hat. Because in the next portion of the conversation, they say this is Sally, a mail delivery person. Sally is standing facing the camera with a smile on her face. They attach the image of the character. Then we ask the model to get Sally to deliver a letter. Sally is standing in front of a red door to a house holding a letter in her hand. We are looking at her from the side. 
and it appears to create the exact same character. What's cool is now the bag is shown on her right side. On this, it's on her left, but the point is it is keeping the bag consistent in the newest generation. So these characters look like the exact same person to me. And apparently why it's able to do that is because it's been trained on visual inputs. In the past, it would have to describe this image via text with the GPT vision model and then write out that text trying to describe it. And then Dolly would create the best representation of that text. So you can see it's like a game of telephone. But now if it's being trained on visual data, it should be able to output the same visual data. Let's go try it within ChatGPT. Here I am within ChatGPT. You can see ChatGPT 4.0 is selected. And first we want to describe our character. I wrote a cartoon king from the Middle Ages wearing a big red robe with jewels on his crown. He is standing facing forward in front of a white background. So I'm using that same last portion of the text to try to get it on a white background. Let's send this through. Okay, not bad. Looks kind of like a Lego character. Now the next portion I have to tell it that this is the character I want and then I want it to do something else. So I'm going to right click save this image. Now I'm going to attach this image. I'm writing this is a cartoon king from the Middle Ages standing proudly in his red robe and jeweled crown. According to the example, it wants me to send this in first. Okay, now I'm going to ask it to do something. I'm writing here, the king is sitting on his throne holding a big jeweled staff. A joker dances to appease him. Okay, it's creating an image. I don't expect this to work, I'm going to be honest. No, not even close. So that's a completely different character. I'm going to start a new chat and do it the way I would do it. I'm going to do something simple here. Put this character in a forest. Let's send it in. No. So just as expected, this is pretty much the exact same. This is what we were getting with GPT-4 Turbo and Dolly 3. Nothing has changed. In this sample, they make it look so easy. We're continuing it. She's being chased by a dog. Now she has tripped. Now she's teaching the dog to fetch. Now she's riding the mail truck. Maybe it's because they used Sally. They put a name to the character. Let's give that a go. I'm writing this is Bob. Bob is about to give a speech in his kingdom. Send it in. All right, didn't understand that instruction. I'll say make an image of Bob giving a speech in his kingdom. Not even close. Okay, there's only one more thing left to do. Let's copy the exact example to see if we can get a similar result. Okay, first. Okay, it looks like this is what we're going with. So it wants a new conversation. I'm pasting in this text. I'm attaching that image, then adding this text, send it in. Nah, I don't think this is a pass. It's also possible that this has been done with the API, whereas this within ChatGPT is so bloated with safety prompts, moderation prompts, that we're not getting the outputs that we'd like. If you want me to build an app and test this consistent character output via the API, let me know in the comments below. I'll do it for a future video. But I'm going to give this new ChatGPT4 Omni and its consistent character sample a fail. If you want to use GPT4 Omni for youraiagent.com, remember it is 50% cheaper. So all of your AI agent tasks are going to cost a lot less. I will leave a link in the description below. If you want to build your own AI apps using the new GPT-4 Omni model, I built and designed an online course called How to Build a Custom AI App. A link for this will also be in the description. And if you like this video, I put two more on the screen right now. Both have been catered to your personal watch history. Give one of them a click for me, give it a watch, and I'll see you in there. Peace.